नमस्कार वोम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज ऑन इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज वेब हैव ज्योत्सना श्रीवास्तव एंड विद मी इज रेणुका ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्सेस ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शैल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर The headlines Defense Minister Rajnath Singh says nation can achieve absolute potential only when its borders are safe External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar to visit Brazil Paraguay and Argentina from 22nd to 27th of this month Beijing says India and China should maintain smooth communication over the border issues and dialogue between both the countries China's Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin to attend the G20 summit in Bali in November. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says to end military activity around the Zaporizhia nuclear complex and calls for allowing a team of inspectors into the complex. Israeli and German leaders have expressed outrage after the Palestinian president accused Israel of committing 50 holocausts against his people. The 17th Pravasi Bharatiya Divas 2023 to be held at Indore in January next year. Janmashtami marking the birth of Lord Krishna being celebrated in various parts of the country and abroad. And in cricket, India to take on Zimbabwe in second ODI of three match series at Harare tomorrow. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today interacted with Jawans of the Indian Army and the Assam Rifles at the headquarters of Assam Rifles South in Imphal. Mr Singh was accompanied by the Chief of Army Staff General Manoj Pandey and other top army officers. During the visit the Defence Minister was briefed about the counter insurgency as well as border management operations on the Indo-Myanmar border to maintain peace and tranquility in the region. Speaking on the occasion Mr Singh appreciated the officers and soldiers for performing their duty with courage and conviction despite challenges posed by terrain and weather and improving the security situation in Manipur. The defense minister exhorted the forces to keep the national flag high through unflinching dedication asserting that the nation can achieve absolute potential only when its borders are safe. He commended the stellar role of Assam Rifles in the last 7 decades and their immense contribution in internal security securing Indo-Myanmar border and key role in bringing northeast into the national mainstream. He said for this reason they are called the friends of the northeast people and the sentinels of the northeast. External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar will pay an official visit to Brazil, Paraguay and Argentina from the 22nd to the 27th of this month. This will be the first visit to the South American region by the External Affairs Minister. During the visit Dr J Shankar will meet the top leadership of these countries and its counterparts. External Affairs Ministry said Dr J Shankar will inaugurate the premises of the newly opened Indian Embassy in Paraguay. In Brazil and Argentina, External Affairs Minister will co-chair the joint commission meetings with his counterparts. He will also interact with business leaders and the Indian communities in these countries. The ministry said Argentina and Brazil are strategic partners of India, and Dr. Jay Shankar's visit will provide an opportunity to explore new areas of cooperation in the post-pandemic era. Deputy National Security Advisor Vikram Mishri participated in Shanghai Cooperation Organization's NSAF meeting in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. In the meeting, India's humanitarian assistance to Afghan people was emphasized. India has called for combating terrorism, terror financing, transnational organized crime, illicit drug trafficking and strengthening information security. China on Friday said that India and China maintain smooth communication over the border issues and the dialogue is effective hinting towards the border talks between the two countries to resolve the prolonged border standoff. The Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin said this while responding to a question. External Affairs Minister S J Shankar on Thursday blamed China for the ongoing China India border tension along the LAC and said that an ancient century can only happen when India and China come together addressing a gathering of diplomats academics and students at the prestigious 
Chula Long Kon University in Bangkok. He said that India-China relationship is going through an extremely difficult phase because of what the Chinese have done in the last two years in our border areas. Responding to his remarks, Wong said that the two countries should provide each other development opportunities and become each other's cooperative partners instead of posing a threat to each other. He said that the two countries have the wisdom and capability to reinforce each rather than wear each other down, adding that we have far more common interests than differences. China Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin both plan to attend the Group of 20 summit in Bali in November, Indonesian President Joko Vidodo says. He said both the leaders have confirmed their visit. This is the first confirmation that both the leaders will attend the summit. It will be the first global summit since Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the heightened tensions over Taiwan. It would also be the first time Mr. Xi has left China since January 2020, when the country shut its borders at the start of the COVID pandemic. Since then, he only left the mainland to mark the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to China on July the 1st this year. The November summit will be much awaited given that U.S. President Joe Biden is also expected to attend. It's unclear if he will meet Mr. Putin. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said it's a priority that all military activity around the Zaporizhia nuclear complex ends and that a team of inspectors is allowed into the complex. In an interview, Guterres said there was a long way of serious discussion after Russia rejected his call for the creation of a demilitarized zone around the plant. Russia and Ukraine have accused each other for shelling the plant, which has raised fears of a catastrophe. Guterres described the situation as very confusing. Multiple calls for international inspectors to be allowed into the complex, which has been under Russian occupation since March, have failed to result in a deal. Meanwhile, Turkish President Recep Erdogan has said that he will discuss the issue of Zaporizhia nuclear power plant with the Russian President Vladimir Putin after holding talks with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Zelensky requested that Russia remove all mines near the plant during the meeting. Erdogan told reporters on his flight back from Ukraine where the two leaders met on Thursday. Erdogan's visit to Ukraine was his first to the country since Russia invaded earlier this year. On Thursday, he met Zelensky and Union Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He said after that meeting, we do not want to experience another Chernobyl. Israeli and German leaders have expressed outrage after the Palestinian president accused Israel of committing 50 holocausts against his people. Mohammed Abbas made the claim during a news conference with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Berlin on Tuesday. Mr. Scholz said nothing at the time but later called the president's comments intolerable and unacceptable. Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid said Mr. Abbas's accusation was not only a moral disgrace but a lie. Six million Jews were murdered in the Holocaust, including one and a half million Jewish children. Following the criticism, Mr. Abbas reaffirmed in a statement that the Holocaust is the most heinous crime in modern human history. Mr. Abbas travelled to Berlin with the aim of winning Germany's support for a bid by the Palestinians to join the United Nations as a full member state and asking it to help restart long-stalled peace talks with the Israelis. After meeting Mr. Scholz at the Federal Chancellery, the President Abbas was asked by reporters whether he planned to apologise to Israel and Germany ahead of the 50th anniversary of a deadly attack by Palestinian militants on Israeli athletes at the Munich Olympics. He said, from 1947 to the present day, Israel has committed 50 massacres in Palestinian villages and cities in Dair Yassin, Tantura, Kafr Qasim and many others, 50 massacres, 50 holocausts. And until today, and, it, and every day there are casualties killed by the Israeli military, he added. In today's hotspot section, we bring you a discussion on expansion of voting rights in Jammu and Kashmir. In conversation are Akshay Rao, former Director General Election Commission of India, and Neelab Srivasta, journalist. The Jammu and Kashmir Chief Electoral Officer on August 17 declared that the state is likely to get around 20 to 25 lakh new voters after the summary revision of electoral rolls that was done for the first time January 1, 2019, 
the same year when the union government abrogated the article 370 from the state and later bifurcated into two union territories and with this inclusion of the estimated about 20 to 25 lakh new voters this is expected that this will also include the people who are present in the union territory of jammu and kashmir by way of being there for education business or some work now as we understand that the election commission works with an idea and aim of inclusive and accessible electoral process where it mandates that no voter is left behind mr raut my first question to you what is the summary revision of electoral rolls which is also at times called the purity of the voter list let's get down to the basics first article 324 of the indian constitution which gives the country elections and election commission of india what does it say it talks about the conduct of elections little later it first talks about superintendents direction and control of the preparation of the electoral rolls and that's precisely what's happening in jammu and kashmir today the preparatory activity for the special summary revision which will make sure that a pure electoral roll is in place for any possible election later on that's happening and let's not give too much of importance to this 20 25 lakhs of voters who are going to be enrolled that's perhaps an estimate that could be premised upon the census data because there is a particular way in which the new population grows and mind you particularly the electoral roll revision has not taken place after 2019 at all the last electoral roll revision was with reference to 11 2019 but the fact is that there is a 3 year clear gap within which it's quite possible there is a lot of people who become eligible to be enrolled in the electoral roll and most of them will be new voters voters who become age 18 and above and they have the right to franchise and they need to come on the electoral roll if you want to make the electoral roll authentic and correct we have some change in the ground situation article 370 has been abrogated the union territory of jammu and kashmir has come into place there is a delimitation that has taken place which has added some more assembly constituencies and most importantly if you recall and let's tell our listeners that there has been a major change in the rp act through the legislative process what's that that is there have been now four dates on which voters could register them for the first time in the electoral roll earlier it was only 1st of january of each year now it is four times 1st of january 1st of april 1st of july 1st of october so once that is done the commission must have thought it appropriate because of the long gap during which the rules revision has not taken place and to avail the new opportunity of an additional date being available that is why you are the summary revision which is going on and which is making a bit of news is with reference to 1 october 2022 so in this situation if certain rules have changed certain other things have happened which are political and legislative election commission has to implement it that way so that is going on precisely Mr Raut the ground situation has been different now but the number of voters which is estimated to be again as between 20 to 25 lakhs does this also lead to an increase with regard to the election related infrastructure yes there is a lot of task in the hand of the election management machinery particularly as it relates to the union territory of jammu and kashmir doesn't matter when the election comes and that is the domain of the election commission of india but as we already know possibly an additional 600 polling stations are being put in place because as you said when we have a substantial increase in the number of electorate and the size of electorate then we need all the facilities we need polling stations we need electronic voting machines we need to that extent security which is considering this special situation which always develops in the state of jammu and kashmir in the past we need security reinforcements and poll officials we need all the facilities that are required for a larger electorate but of course recently the prime minister said it's the mother of democracy and we are from 1951 onwards this country has got used to periodic elections each time on time so when it happens i'm sure that this will be delivered well when the elections takes place and mind you one thing the efforts of the election management that is the election commission of india from 51 onwards has been to make sure that anyone who is entitled to be on the electoral list is included no one is disenfranchised the whole idea of the constitutional fathers giving the franchise in the hands of ordinary indians 
from the day one, from 1951 elections onwards, was that to give power in the hand of each person. And if those persons are excluded and not brought on the list to start with, then what sort of election and democracy will be? That is why the electoral roll revision becomes very important. It is to make sure that anyone who is entitled to be on the electoral list should come into the electoral list. Of course, the opposite thing is also true that someone should not be falsely or by any wrong act be on the electoral roll. That is why the claims and objections are raised and a finally accepted electoral roll takes place. With this declaration of the chief electoral officer that the summary revision would be done and there will be inclusion of people who will also be there in the state who by way of work or education, the political parties in Jammu and Kashmir, Mr. Raut, have created a controversy of sorts saying that this is a ploy of the center and the Bharti Janta Party of influencing the election results in the union territory. Now, as a common man, how do we understand as to what happens in other parts? What is the measure that the election commission does in other parts of the country? Does it not do the electoral revision of the voter list or how is it done in the other parts of the country and what is different here? Is it similar or is it different? Well, nothing could uh, defy the logic when this argument about the outsiders coming into the electoral role, etc. This doesn't really cut any logic anywhere. And mind you, Election Commission of India is a constitutional organization which is completely independent of any government authority. That's point number one. And it does what it is doing in Jammu and Kashmir today. And it is not only Jammu and Kashmir, it is being done in other states. And it will be done continuously in other states also, in remaining states. And this is a routine function in a way. And what happened in the abrogation of Article 370 or what happened in the creation of Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir or what happened in the Delimitation Commission results, those have political and legislative processes involved. But today what is happening through the Election Commission, it is nothing but what is under law and what is under the implementation of the law of the land and the law of the elections under RP Act and under the overall umbrella that is provided by Article 324 of the Indian Constitution. So, the simple thing, anyone who is ordinarily resident, and mind you, it's not someone who is of a particular state or a particular linguistic or ethnic origin who have been given the right to vote. The Indian Constitution gives the right to vote to every Indian. It is Indian. So, any Indian who is an ordinary resident of any place, and that is determined not by any arbitrariness, but through a lawful format and through inquiry and by getting the evidence by proving the facts. It's not that certain X amount of people who are here, they say we are residents and they are brought into the electoral role. It's not like that. It goes through the process of booth level officer, the AERO, electoral registration officers, and then there is the RO, then there is the district election officer, there's the chief electoral officer. So there are lots of checks and balances in this process before someone is put in the electoral role as an ordinary resident. And this happens, as you just now said, anywhere. It happens in the northeast, it happens in south, west, east, any state center. The rules are the same. Only thing I think the confusion could arise because before the abrogation of certain parts of the constitution, of provisions of the constitution, it was based on certain particular additional requirements by which people could be on the electoral list. But now, like any place of India, an ordinary resident could get into the electoral role. Besides the fact which I just mentioned that for three years, there has not been any revision. So it's likely that a lot of the local youth could now be above the age of 18 and they have a right to come into the voter list. What finally happens are the number of the electoral role electorate. That is immaterial. That's a matter of just aggregates. That doesn't have any political implications. It has political implications maybe for a political party. But look at the perspective of election management or the franchise of the people or the ordinary people who have a right to vote and right to be on the electoral roll. I think it's all by the rule of the game. Thank you so much Absolutely. for your Absolutely. comments, Mr. Rao. Thank you. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. And now let's listen to our special segment, Popery. Hello friends. Welcome to another interesting episode of Kaleidoscope. Dear listeners, I'm sure sometime in your life, just randomly, while walking on road or traveling by metro 
or shopping, you must have come across someone who looks exactly like someone you know. And you ended up staring at that fellow or wondering, is this the same person? And what if you come across someone very famous like Elon Musk? Well, that can be a possibility if you are in China. Yes, friends, a man from China is making waves on the internet for the same reason. He looks just like the world's one of the richest persons, Elon Musk. He's popular by the name of Tesla CEO's doppelganger. His surprisingly similar looks has left many social media users bemused. The video shared by Udubria Isaac on Instagram is now going viral and has garnered millions of views. The caption of the post reads, Chinese Elon Musk. In the video, the man, who has been identified as Yilong Ma, comes out of Tesla and says, Hi everyone, I'm Elon Musk. The post has amassed more than 16 million views and over a million likes on Instagram. Friends, Raksha Bandhan has just passed. A festival of sweet bond between brothers and sisters. A woman from Rajasthan has taken the sweetness to a next level. A photo in internet doing the rounds showing a woman tying Rakhi to a leopard. Her novel gesture and unconditional love to the animal is winning hearts on social media. In the photo, a woman is seen in pink sari with her head covered, tying a Rakhi to an injured leopard, moments before it is handed over to the local forest department. Shared by Indian Forest Officer Susanta Nanda on Twitter, the caption reads, For ages, man and animal in India have lived in harmony with unconditional love to the wild. Since being shared, the post has garnered over 900 likes on Twitter or even more by the time the story comes to you. Users praise the woman in the comment section for giving such wonderful message to the people around. of Kaleidoscope. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akash Vani Ke Saath. It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Sa, reliving the journey of India since independence over the last 75 years with All India Radio. Starting 15th August, the series will be broadcast on All India Radio, 100.1 FM Gold Channel, Primetime News Bulletins and across all its platforms. Tune in to stay updated with All India Radio. In today's episode, we bring you the story of how the Constitution, the soul of Indian Republic, came into effect. Preparing for the first general elections in independent India was a mammoth exercise. No election on this scale had ever been conducted in the world before. There were about 17 crore eligible voters who had to elect about 3,200 MLAs and 489 members of the Lok Sabha. Only 15% of these eligible voters were literate. Though the elected leaders of a free nation enjoy the confidence of their people, it is the people themselves, unknown and unsung, who weave and wear the fabric of democracy. What follows here is the record of such a people, the people of our nation who played a worthy, active part in a great experiment. The experiment of Free India's first general election. The constitution granted voting rights to the entire population, including men and women. At that time, even many countries in Europe had not given voting rights to women. The aims and ideals that became reality on our attaining independence were well expressed through the adult franchise clause incorporated in our constitution. Universal adult franchise, a phrase that became a fact. A phrase which conferred on nearly half our total population the right to vote, the right to frame the form of government most suited to our needs. For a nation that had emerged so recently from foreign rule, it was a big step, a bold step forward. 
During the polls, the Election Commission used All India Radio to educate the public on the Constitution, Universal Adult Franchise, Registration of Voters and the Voting Process. The 17th Pravasi Bharatiya Divas 2023 will be held at Indore in January next year. The External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakchi in a tweet said that Secretary, Councillor, Passport and Visa Division, Osaf Sayeed and Chief Secretary of Madhya Pradesh, Akbal Singh Benz, signed a memorandum of understanding for hosting the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. On the occasion, Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan was also present. Pravasi Bharatiya Divas is celebrated every year on 9th of January to mark the contribution of overseas Indian community in the development of India. It also commemorates the return of Mahatma Gandhi from South Africa to India on 9th of January 1915. Janmashtami, the festival of Lord Krishna birth, is being celebrated with religious fervor all over the country. Reports of celebration have come in from abroad also. The festival of Janmashtami, marking the birth of Lord Krishna, is being celebrated by the Hindu community in Bangladesh. The Bangladesh Puja Ujjapon Parishad and Mahanagar Sarbajanen Puja Committee have organized a three-day program at the historic Dhakeshwari Temple in Dhaka. Other prominent Krishna temples in Dhaka affiliated to the ISKCON will hold the procession and puja today to celebrate Janmashtami. Other cities and towns of Bangladesh are also celebrating Janmashtami with religious fervor and devotion to Lord Krishna. The day is a public holiday in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has urged the Hindu community and believers of other faiths to not consider themselves as minorities. Virtually joining an event to mark the Janmashtami celebration at the historic Dhakeshwari Temple on Thursday, Prime Minister Hasina said that the government of Bangladesh wants people of all faiths to live with equal rights. China on Thursday voiced strong opposition to the start of negotiations on a trade initiative, U.S.-Taiwan initiative on the 21st century trade between the U.S. and Taiwan. It vowed to take all necessary measures to safeguard China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Former National Security Advisor NSA of the USA John Bolton has said that the Taliban has failed its commitments towards Afghan people. He said a large number of foreign fighters have returned to Afghanistan. Mr. Bolton said in an interview with an Afghan news agency that President Donald Trump's decision to sign the Doha agreement between the US and the Taliban was a big mistake. In cricket, the second one-day international of the three-match series between India and Zimbabwe will be played tomorrow at Harare Sports Club, Harare. In the first ODI yesterday, visitors defeated hosts by 10 wickets. Flags are flying at half-mast in Cuba as the country mourns 16 firefighters who died while battling a blaze at the Matanzas fuel depot. The fire broke out on 5th of August after lightning struck a fuel tank at the depot on Cuba's northern coast. The Finnish Prime Minister, Sana Marin, is facing a backlash after being seen partying in a leaked video. In the footage thought to be taken from social media, she and friends, including Finnish celebrities, are seen dancing and singing. And now a quick look at the headlines once again. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says nation can achieve absolute potential only when its borders are safe. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar to visit Brazil, Paraguay and Argentina from 22nd to 27th of this month. Beijing says India and China should maintain smooth communication over the border issues and dialogue between both the countries. China's Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin to attend the G20 summit in Bali in November. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says to end military activity around the Zaporizhia nuclear complex. Israeli and German leaders have expressed outrage after the Palestinian president accused Israel of committing 50 holocausts against his people. The 17th Pravasi Bharatiya Divas 2023 to be held at Indore in January next year. Janamashtami marking birth of Lord Krishna being celebrated in various parts of the country and abroad. And in cricket, India to take on Zimbabwe in second ODI of three-match series at Harare tomorrow. And now before we end, let us listen to Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan, Vaishnavajan, by artists from Afghanistan. Vaishnavajan to tene kahe ji, prid parai jane re. Vaishnavajan to tene kahe ji, 
And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.